Oh my God, it's been absolutely crazy all night. It's 6 p.m. and it's been non-stop. Welcome to a city that I'm gonna call a surprise city. Now for the Ukrainians, you can probably read that sign and you know already. For the non-Ukrainians, go ahead and comment on the box below and let me know what you think the name of this city is. So that's the train station behind me there. Um, I'm not gonna tell you exactly what city I'm in just yet, but here's a couple of hints. Uh, when I left Lviv on the train five hours ago, uh, it was only about three degrees. Here it is plus 12. Uh, and apparently the language, it is Ukrainian here, but it has a different accent compared to the Ukrainian and other parts of the country. So there you go, it's warmer, different Ukrainian accent. Guess where I am? Here's a couple more hints for you. The neighboring country is very, very close to the city. As you can see, there is a river that runs through the city and right behind those trees you see straight ahead is a large castle. Obviously, it's closed for the winter, but they have a Aqua Rio Park. I'm all checked in in my hostel. That's it right there. My window is up top, uh, but unfortunately, it's going to be dark in about an hour. So I'm going to do a little bit of exploring and that down there is the center. So I'm in a great spot. And right across the street from my hostel is the National University Building. So this secret city that I'm in, I went and got some food to bring to my hostel and it was half the cost of Lviv. Do you know where I am yet? This poor boy here was only 23 years old. Looking at the design of this area, across the street you can see over here there's an old cemetery. And I believe what I'm standing in used to be a park. And just in the last two years they've turned this into an extension of the cemetery. You can see it's very fresh, obviously. All of these men, these soldiers that lay to rest here, have all come within the last one to two years. Out of respect for all of these fallen soldiers that are laying to rest here in their home city, I'd like to tell you the name of the city. It is Uzgarad or Uzharad, depending on how you pronounce it, in the southwest part of Ukraine. It's sad that I'm running out of daylight, but it's nice to see all these candles burning. Very special place. This building here is called Dream City. I think it's all fancy stores for the rich people.
So the old town of the city has uh, three or four walking streets, which I will explore more in depth during the day, but here's one of them. Good afternoon, day number two here in Ujgorod or Ujharad, depending on how you choose to pronounce it. The air alarm went off this morning. It's a very strange, different kind of air alarm here. I'll try and record it for you if it goes off again in the next few days. Keeping with the tradition of Ukraine, there are lots of homeless dogs out and about. Well, that's a very interesting place to take a sleep, right in front of everyone. Hello, 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 how are you? Oh, you want your belly rubbed? Hey, hey, oh, good, hey. Now that is a nice church. Because the city is very, very close to the Slovakian border, yes, the Ukrainian language I'm hearing has a very strange sort of accent to it. It is a mix between the two. The three guys you just saw fishing in the small lake there, I was listening to them speak for a couple of minutes and the accent is, uh, it is definitely different compared to what I've heard and uh, even just uh, four hours away on the train in Lviv, uh, it's, it's an interesting sound. Well, I'll give you a friendly warning. If you're deciding to come to Uzgorod, do not wear your super beautiful shoes because most of the sidewalks and walkways look just like this. Oh yes, the beautiful sidewalks of Ukraine. Do not come here if you have a bad leg. Do not come here in a wheelchair if you have new shoes on. Uh, and at night, you might want to have a light or you will fall into a giant hole and your life will be finished. Like I said, keep your eyes down and don't look up or you'll fall into a hole. Well, it is plus 10 today and it is raining a lot, uh, but I guess it's a good time to go skating. <laughs> Why not? They look like they're having a good time. I'm about to go in the main entrance of the park. Take a look at this map. You are here. I'm entering through the street. I'm gonna zigzag through the park. Walk around one of these little ponds here and exit on the other side. Let's go! So with keeping uh, the tradition of Ukrainian parks, pretty much every park, at least the large ones, have amusement parks inside, which is pretty cool because me back home in North America, to go to an amusement park you have to pay a giant ticket to enter, but here the amusement parks are in the parks, they're free to come. You just pay for the individual rides. It even has a little zoo park and a tubing park. 
Well, this looks fun. You carry your tube up those stairs and you fly down here. On a non-rainy day, that would be a lot of fun. Sitting in the middle of the park is this old all-wood church. Well, I must say, it looks like a solid bridge, but it is a suspension bridge, and it is jumping like crazy with me walking on it. Woohoo! As you can see, there's a lot of bouncing going on because this girl just jogged across the damn thing, and it's shaking like crazy. It is definitely a wet day for football. As you can see, it is a full-size football field, but what these guys have done is they've made a mini version, and it's like non-stop action-packed. Across from my hostel is a National University building, but so is this one right here, and there's actually quite a few National University buildings scattered around the city. Very similar to uh, Borisław in Poland and many Eastern European countries and cities. They have these little miniature bronze sculptures scattered all around the city. And this one here is called Buffalo Bill. And this one here is called hedgehogs. One, two, and little three. This here is the Academy of Dramatic Theater building. Because of the war, many of the cities have turned off power to uh, public areas as well as major buildings, but this is the front of the theater. I think what I love most about these old Eastern European cities and countries is these uh, alleyway restaurants and bars. Right stuck between two buildings, you'll always find something kind of cool. If you're a chocolate lover, then the uh, most popular Ukrainian chocolate is Roshan. Well, it's Saturday afternoon. It's time to try the street project for the first time here in Uzgorod. Uh, as you can see in this main center square here, they've got a little bit of a market going on. I was thinking of doing it here the other day, but nope, too much competition. I've narrowed it down to three locations. Gonna go to, my, uh, to the one I've chosen and set up now, and let's see how the people here react to the street project. So the moment I set up, boom, it was non-stop busy. Uh, <laughs> problem is language barrier. I'm trying to ask people if I can find an assistant. It has been non-stop and the coolest part is that I have no assistant today and uh, somehow it's working. Everybody's reading the Ukrainian story, asking questions however way they can. Very, very friendly people here. The project is a hit. Oh my god, it's been absolutely crazy all night. It's 6 p.m. and it's been non-stop. Street project is a hit in Uzgorod. Good people. <laughs> I've been working for seven hours and it's still busy. <sighs> so here's something I find quite interesting uh, with regards to population. Um, obviously the war is going on in the east, so uh, hundreds of thousands of people have piled over to the west. Uh, the city of Chernivtsi has uh, almost doubled in population. Ivano Frankiv is also super, super busy. 
Lviv itself, I bet you, is three times more population. It is really, really full. Um, but with this city of Huzgarad, it's actually super quiet. Half the population have left the country, and people from the east just didn't come here. So when it came to the hotels and the uh, hostels when I was researching, uh, I've seen that just walking around, I've seen three or four hotels completely closed. Uh, no people at all. Um, obviously no tourists with a war. And again, people from the east just didn't come here. Um, my hostel actually is about 240 good evening a night, which is about $3 US. Um, because again, there are, I think about eight, nine or 10 hostels in the city. So there's lots of competition when it comes to the very few people that are actually traveling. Um, there are four rooms in my hostel, um, actually five, and pr pretty much between four, five, six beds each. So we're looking at about 20, 25 beds in my hostel. And actually there's me and two other people. <laughs> so again, 25 beds and three customers. Correction, my mistake, I did a quick calculation. 240 good evening is about $6 US. So pretty cheap and again, very empty. Way down there in the distance is the main city. I've come a couple kilometers all the way up the hill to the uh, main national university, the main campus. As I mentioned the other day, there's lots of national university buildings scattered around the city, but this is the main academic building. And here's another one of these little bronze sculptures. Way down there, that strip of pavement, is the Uzurad Airport. Well, that was very unexpected to see an amphitheater just sitting on the hill, kind of in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by a subdivision. A very, very old. I don't know if they're renovating it or tearing it down, but they're doing some work to it. And I've never seen tiny little houses all the way around it, like uh, you just saw there. Like these little huts. I don't know if people are living in them. There's a few people going in and out of these doors and smoking, so... <laughs> I don't know. Random. Surrounding the amphitheater are houses, hotels, and restaurants completely shut down. And I don't mean recently shut down. I mean, they were shut down years ago. Welcome to Narodna Square. That building over there is a museum. Uh, across the way, past this gardens, is the old prison. And then over here, we have the main government office. The prison looks like it's been closed a long time. Let me show you how little Tomas is. So little. Welcome to Poshtova Square. If you can't read this, I'll translate it for you. It's uh, backwards R love yik yik po yik por po pula. Oh boy, it is a difficult language. Somehow that says I love Uzerod. <laughs>
This little guy here is called Liberty Bell. So if you're the kind of person like me that loves uh, hidden passages and stuff like that, then this is the city for you. Here's an example. You think it's just a building and then all of a sudden, boom, it's not. They've got these little alleyways that turn into uh, little mini adventures. Here is something very cool and kind of funny at the same time. Guide around Uzgarad for blind people in Braille language. Very cool. Check this out. It is a map for blind people, which is cool. But the funny part is how do the blind people find the map? <laughs> Not funny. Kind of funny. Good afternoon from my little hostel. Uh, I am in the lion room. I would like to send this part of my video out to the city of Lviv. Dear Lviv, this is called sunshine. Yes, this is called no rain, blue skies, sunshine. You should try it sometime, Lviv. I can't believe it's plus 15 and sunny and it's February. Woohoo! So I'm heading back across the river towards the train station, behind the train station, a couple of kilometers to an area that, uh, well, it's, I think it's some cliffs actually, maybe a, a giant quarry. It looks like there's a beach area. Well, as usual, I decided to pick up a bag of dog food. There's a dog over there and one here. I'm gonna feed them on the way. Lunch time! This one's a little bit shy. He's gonna eat his food later. This little sweetie here looked pretty hungry. Hey, come on, hi. <gasps> Hello, hey, yes, I gave you some food. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, I'm obviously in the middle of nowhere. Yes, I think it used to be a quarry. And it's obviously completely shut down. And this right here is the highest peak. Well, whatever this used to be, they had a beach volleyball court. I found out the name, it's Radvanka Lake.
Well, I gave the rest of my food to these uh, two sweethearts and they wolfed it down like crazy. This one, as you can see, is missing a lot of hair. So, yeah, your cute eyes. You definitely are hungry. Yeah, this girl's really hungry, so I found a supermarket and I bought a big bag. Uh, she's losing all her hair. This one came over to me, as you can see, has a busted ear and actually two broken feet. It's healed, but they've healed in. And I saw when she's walking over, see, both bent to the side. He doesn't want the dog food though. And this one loves it, that's for sure. Well, the one dog won't eat the dog food, so maybe some hot dog wieners or sausages. Maybe he'll like that one. Well, I don't know what these are, but they have little dog paws on them, so I'm assuming for dogs. Oh my God, the dogs went crazy. <laughs> Who wants to eat dog food when you can eat hot dogs, right? They just wolfed them down like crazy. That's good. I have arrived to the city's botanical garden. Unfortunately, it is closed uh, for the season, obviously. Botanique. And this is the only view we're gonna get of the big, beautiful botanical gardens. Welcome to the Holy Cross Cathedral. This building is located in the heart of the city. This is the back side of the Holy Cross Cathedral and the bishop's residence. So on my map, somewhere on the corner here is a sculpture called Eiffel Tower. And then I thought, well, maybe it's this light post. As you can see, this, uh, this light post is designed differently with uh, uh, solid metal. So I thought, ah, maybe this is representation. But then I got closer and I thought, ah, you got to peek inside. There it is, Eiffel Tower. Here is a city map to give you an idea of where I am. You are here. I'm about to show you, there's a tongue twister, Zakarpatia Regional Philharmonic Society Orthodox Synagogue. And then we just came from the cathedral and there's actually a um, Uzgarad Children's Railway, as you can see here, it goes all the way around the corner of the river. So I believe the front of the building has been refurbished, but as you can see, the side definitely has not been. And as I said, next to the synagogue is the children's railway station, but I don't think they've been using it in the last few years because it's looking pretty old and as you can see it does run along the river all the way around the corner to the castle but they've put a fence so I don't think they're using it. So I have decided to show you one of the walking streets on one side of the river at night and I will show you the walking street on the other side of the river during the day. Well, I found another little sculpture. Look at this guy. Hello there, sir. And what's down here? 
Ah, interesting. So because of the war, a lot of the cities are turning off multiple city lights. As you can see here, um, I'm standing on a very dark pathway next to the river. They're trying to save power throughout the entire country. But I'm on a mission to walk around in the dark and try and find as many of these sculptures as I can. So I just found one that's super cool. Check this out. It's a knot. I'm going to call this one Fat Liberty. Is it just me or does it look like a chubby Statue of Liberty? And I found this little guy and he's ice skating. On the south side of the walking bridge is Sandor Pitofi Square Street which is this. As you can see there is some construction on the right. They're ripping up the square and redoing it. Welcome to the main walking street. Corzo Street. I showed you this guy earlier on in the video, but he's the lamp lighting dude. From this vantage point you can see the main square straight ahead. I will show you that momentarily. Over here is the uh, Philharmonic Synagogue I showed you yesterday. On the other side of the bridge is Theatre Square. And why, you ask, do they call it Theatre Square? Because there is a theater. They also have a mini stage for some outdoor shows. So I want to take this opportunity to thank over a thousand people I met here in Uzgorod. Uh, I know what you're thinking, there's no way you met a thousand people, but believe me, I've been here I think 11 nights, did my street project, you know, seven or eight of these nights, and I probably met over 1,000 incredible people. Um, hearts of gold bringing me gifts and, and, and tea and cookies and postcards and magnets and all these little souvenirs and selfies and hugs and kisses and everything. Incredible people here. Uh, to all of the uh, non-Ukrainians that are thinking of coming at some point to visit Ukraine, you have to come to Uzgorod. It's a great city. The people are fantastic. There's a great vibe here. Um, and to all of the people living here in Uzgorod, I thank you very much. Thanks for watching the video and we will see you next time.